Well, hello. It's good to have you with us. Today's topic is about Bible translation, and it is a topic near and dear to my heart because I'm a linguophile. That's a word I just made up, by the way. A linguophile means a lover of language. I am just fascinated. For years, I've been fascinated by the way language works, its intricacies, its ambiguities. This is an excerpt from Richard Lederer's book, Crazy English. He says, let's face it, English is a crazy language. There is no egg in eggplant or ham in hamburger, neither apple nor pine in pineapple. English muffins were not invented in England or French fries in France. We take English for granted, but if we explain, explore its paradoxes, we find that quicksand can work slowly, boxing rings are square, and a guinea pig is neither from Guinea nor is it a pig. Finally, when the stars are out, they're visible. But when the lights are out, they're invisible. And why, when I wind up my watch, I start it. But when I wind up this essay, I end it. Isn't language crazy? Though language is crazy, it's a wonderful tool for communication. And it works marvelously successfully. And I think that's why God chose language as his means to reveal himself through his divine word, through the Bible. God revealed himself with human language. But of course, for most of us, the Bible comes to us not in its original languages, but in translation. So what we want to talk about is how translation works today. My students will often ask me, or people in a church where I'm ministering will ask me, what, which Bible translation should I use? What's the best Bible translation? Which one should I use? It used to be the answer to that question was quite simple, because there was really only one English Bible translation that almost everyone used, and that was the King James Version. Um, I grew up memorizing and learning and reading from the King James Version, but today there's a whole plethora of different versions. There's not only the King James Version, there's the New King James Version. There's the Revised Standard Version and the New Revised Standard Version. There's the American Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible. There's the English Standard Version, the New English Bible, the Revised English Bible, the New English Translation, the Contemporary English Version, the International Standard Version, the New International Version, today's New International Version. It's enough to drive you crazy, isn't it? I keep thinking you could just take several words, International Standard Version, and mix them up, English, in any combination, and you'd come up with one of our Bible translations. And so sometimes students panic. How do they possibly handle Bible translation? So to the question, which translation should I use? My answer is always the same. My answer is use more than one. Use more than one. Now, why should you more, use more than one? Two reasons. First, first reason is because no translation can capture all the meaning. No translation can capture all the meaning. You've heard the expression, something was lost in the translation. And that's because something is always lost when you translate from one language to another. So no translation, no single translation can capture all of the meaning. The second reason I say to use more than one is all translations capture important aspects of meaning. All translations capture important aspects of meaning. Now I say it's especially important to use different kinds of translations.